Now, folks, just run with the ideal. In this video, I'm going to show you one way to make an offset bend in a half-inch piece of EMT conduit here using a hand conduit bender from ideal. The offset bend is used when the, an obstruction requires a change in the direction of a piece of conduit or the plane of the conduit. And it's actually just two bends in the length of conduit that allow that conduit to get over the obstruction and continue along the length or along its path. Now, before making the offset, you must choose the appropriate angles you want to use here for the offset. And keep it in mind that shallower bends make for easier wire pulling. Steeper bends will conserve a little space in here, but they're also a little harder to pull through as well. So, and for small kicks of you know, just one or two inches that feed, say, an electrical outlet box, a 10 degree offset is generally probably used. For obstructions between, say, one to six inches or so, 22 and a half or 30 degree angles work out best usually. And if the obstruction gets to eight or 10 inches or more, probably a 45 or 60 degree bend uh, might be recommended. However, any of these angles could be used to create this offset. Now for this demonstration, I'm gonna use the catalog number 74-026 ductile iron conduit bender here from Ideal. Now, ductile iron benders are typically preferred by professionals as they will last longer than aluminum head benders here, which are lighter in weight, but they're also not quite as durable as a ductile iron. Now, since you're actually bending angles in a length of conduit here, believe it or not, trigonometry comes into play here. And depending on the degree of bend you're doing and the height of your obstruction, a certain amount of what we call shrink amount and a distance between the bends is going to have to get calculated. Now, in, I'm working with a length of conduit that I know is 60 inches long here. Now, because of the two bends you're going to put in it, in order to create the offset, uh, the overall length of the conduit will shrink by a certain amount, which is, again, dependent upon the degree of bend you're dealing with and, again, the height of the obstruction you're dealing with. Now, 30-degree bends are pretty common out there. And the uh, shrink amount is a quarter inch for every inch of obstruction you're going over, and the multiplier is two. So the math gets kind of easy on a four-inch obstruction over here. We know four times the quarter inch, which is the one inch of, of shrink we're going to have, and two times four, which is going to be the distance between the bends. Now, on a 10-degree kick, the shrink amount is only about a sixteenth of an inch, so it's kind of negligible, and the multiplier is six. Uh, when we get down to 22 and a half degree bends, the shrink amount gets up to be 3 sixteenths of an inch for every inch of obstruction you're getting, you're going over, and the multiplier is 2.6. Uh, 45 degree, the uh, shrink amount is 3 eighths of an inch, and the multiplier is 1.4. And for those uh, bigger 60 degree bends, uh, half inch of shrink, and the multiplier is 1.2. Okay? Now, we make this easy by providing with an offset bending guide on the handle of every ideal conduit bender so the math you don't have to do the math now looking at that offset bending guide for a four inch obstruction and using two 30 degree bends the guide gives us a shrink amount of one inch and a distance between the bends of eight inches that's perfect again we don't have to do the math that follows along with the shrink amount and the multiplier given for a 30 degree bend with a four inch obstruction again four times the quarter inch uh, or the one inch for the shrink and um, the height of obstruction is four, four times two is eight inches for the distance between the bends. Now, step one is to measure the distance from the last coupling you're dealing with, piece of conduit, out to the obstruction you need to get over. In my example, I'm going to say that's 36 inches, okay? Now, step two is to add that shrink amount to, that the table gave us to that measured distance, okay? And so you're going to make a mark on your conduit at 36 plus 1 or 37 inches. So from this end here, I've measured out, and I'm at 37 inches going to make a mark. Now, contractors generally use a pencil to make that mark on a conduit, so it actually can be erased somewhere down the road. In my example, I'm going to use a permanent marker and mark the conduit uh, all the way around the conduit. And I do that because then the mark will not get lost in the bender head when you're actually doing the bending here in a, in a minute or two. Now, step three is to make the second mark on the conduit. Now, remember that this mark is going to what we call back up from the first mark, okay? Not add two, you're going to back up. And the distance between bends is eight inches. So 37 minus eight is at 29 inches. So I'm going to make another mark at 29 inches on my conduit here, and that's going to be the distances between the two bends. Now, offsets are typically done in the air, not on the ground. And you're going to simply stand the, the head bender down with a handle down, the head kind of close to you. And step four is to line that 37-inch mark up with the arrow in the bender head here, okay? And make sure it's lined up pretty tight with it. And you can use the graduated marks 
on the side of the bender head here to know when you bent the conduit to 30 degrees. And the bottom of the conduit here will be even with that mark when you have bent it to that 30 degree mark. Now, to do this bend, I'm going to place one foot down here by, 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 down here by the bottom of the handle, and I'm going to lean the conduit, the conduit bender a little bit away from me as well. As well okay? And uh, when I apply pressure to the conduit, I want to get my arm over here tight so I can apply pressure close to the bender head. If I'm out here and I'm applying pressure to the conduit, I'm going to end up with a bow in the conduit, which is what you don't want to do. So I'm going to make sure it's lined up. Then I'm going to make that bend and using constant pressure, bend this to 30 degrees. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, step five is to slide the conduit down the uh, conduit head and rotate the conduit 180 degrees. Okay. And then you're going to line up that second mark with the arrow on the bender head. Okay. Now, another tip is that everything you just bent is in front of you on the other side of the bender head, okay? And you want to make sure that you line up the two bends before making the second bend. And you can use the handle here to align the first bend with the second bend, okay? And just kind of sight your way down it, okay? And you want to be careful to line up those two bends uh, because if you don't, you'll end up with what they call a dog leg. And, uh, you know, anytime you have two or more bends in a piece of pipe, there's the potential for what electricians call a dog leg where the two pipes aren't aligned properly. And uh, this creates problems when you actually go to install it in the wall. And of course, on top of that, it doesn't look for a very professional looking bend either. So now, then I'm gonna use a similar technique and make the second 30 degree bend in this piece of conduit, okay? And create this four inch offset. There we go. And there's my four inch offset, okay? Now, using a tape measure, we can check the accuracy of the bender, and you can see that the offset is right at about 36 inches away from the end of the conduit, which would clear the obstruction, and the depth or height of the offset is at four inches. And you also notice that the overall length of the conduit, which started out at 60 inches, is now just 59 inches, and the difference is that one inch of shrink that we allowed for when we made our first mark at 37 inches. Now, knowing how to use and make an offset bend quickly and efficiently will make those jobs run a lot smoother and add value to what you can do on that job site. And again, electricians don't bend the conduit to length and then cut it to the correct length. Once they know how to use a bender properly, uh, the, the bend correctly, the conduit is the correct length for the job that they're doing or the installation they're working on. And using a good quality hand conduit bender here, like this one from Ideal, will provide accurate and professional looking bends that electricians kind of expect when they're out there on the job. And if you want to learn more about the line of Ideal Conduit Benders from Ideal, please visit our website or contact our customer service department and find a distributor nearby you. Hey, thanks for watching, folks. I'm Ron with Ideal, and I'll see you on the next one.